Good evening, viewers. You are welcome to Woman Without Limits. I am Reverend Kathy Kuna. What a delight it is to have you tuned in today. I want you to invite your friends. By the way, <laughs> the thought of who I have today just brings me laughter. Just joy, because I know you're in for a treat. A man that we all know, and the first thing he asked is, I'm a man, where am I on woman without limits? <laughs> so I had to tell him, it's because it's without limits. We are not limited. <laughs> and so he's a, a, a hero to many. He's a bishop. He's an amazing leader. He's a father. He has done great and tremendous things in our nation, known by everybody for doing great and mighty works for the King of Glory. And we honor him and so today i am so privileged to even host him on this show woman without limits would you please welcome on set with me bishop jb masinde thank you thank Karibu you very much, Kofu. god bless you yes how are you i'm very well you yeah. look so well i'm still wondering what i'm doing on woman without <laughs> limits <laughs> Until you assured me it is woman but without limits without limits yeah well, yes it's so, doing well yes and we thank god and we give God the glory. Amen. Because God has kept us. Amen. When you find you're on this side of whatever has been going on, yeah. you know, look back and say, if it was not the Lord, you would not have who was on it. our side. Yeah. That's why it, it repeats again. Let Israel now say, yeah. if it was not the Lord who was on our side, hmm. when men rose up against us, yeah. when the waters came, yeah. when the fire came, we would not have survived. We would never have made but it. But when you sit in a set like this, on yeah. a time like this, you know what the word of, of God says in that same chapter? Yeah. It says, you know what? The snare is broken. Mm. And you have escaped. Come on. So all of us are just escaping. Amen. Of something that was set up. To kill but us. But you have just escaped. Yeah. So whenever I find myself I'm waking up again, this is the day the Lord has made, I've escaped. You give glory yeah, to yeah. God. Give and I heard you say somewhere the other day, mm. that you want 120. <laughs> Yeah, that's what God says. <laughs> you know, I listen to all, all, all I listen to all preachers myself. Yeah. I pay attention to them. And uh, Kenneth Copeland said, you know, this seventy years yes. thing was Moses. Yeah. Who says it? Yeah. It, uh, when he was writing his psalm. Yeah. But, but God's last word was one twenty. The last word when God set the age for man was, was one twenty. Was one twenty. Yeah. It was so this seventy upon no, Moses. It's, it's Moses now who said, oh, yeah, seventy. <laughs> Or eight, if yeah. you are strong enough. Yeah. But right now I'm seeing people who are already one or two with it's their true. mind still lucid. They can still reason. Totally. Now let's, let's, let's trust and believe God. And believe God for All longevity. Things are possible. Yes. So I'm coming to longevity, Bishop. Yes. I just want to know, because of, obviously everybody knows you. They, they see you, you. You do exploits for God. Mm. We want to know from Ukombele, Bishop, where were you born? How were you born? By who? <laughs> No, we can't. I fell from heaven like rain. <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, uh, uh, everybody has a background. Uh, for those, I was born in Kakamega. Uh -huh. uh, but then my father, and my father moved us to Nairobi when I was still very young. So me, I normally tell people, yeah. Sikuja Nairobi Kwan University. Uh -huh. That's what many like people, people of my age yeah. came to Nairobi to go to university. Yeah. So they were coming from Kakamega, Siaya, Muranga, Embu, yeah. to Machakos to, to come to me. I came to Nairobi to go to Nasare School. So that is you can You came that young? Yeah, 19, 1957, I was in Nasare School in what? Nairobi. What was your father doing then? My father was working in this city. Ah. He's an, he was an electrical artisan. So when you say when him to amta ni kweli? Ah, when him to amta, I had to him some. This is this is the boy. We have been raised in this city. I've mm. seen this city grow. Yeah. By the time some of us were becoming conscious, that's when the agitation for independence was right. was full on, and uh, we we could see the late Jomo Kenyatta, Paul Ngei, mm. Moi, the Ronald Gallows. The pioneer politicians of this of Oginga Odinga campaigning at Kamukunji grounds. Leave, leave alone. There was no Juakali that right. time. It was just an open ground. Yeah. So we as, as small boys would go and listen to them and watch them and listen to our parents talk about independence and stuff like that. Because yeah. some of us are born during that emergency period. Mm -hmm. So we live through it without knowing. Without knowing. So on the tail end of it, that's when some of us were now being introduced to a school and all stuff like that. Right. So I went to class one in 1959. You just ask your neighbor, where are you? 
as, as the host. As the, so that's when I, so I was born wow. in this city, went to school in nursery school in this city, right. primary school in this city. Yeah. I went to high school, went to L levels, college I did in this city. So me and my, I, I, You're a city. I, I met my city. wife in this city. Right. So it's only my ID that reads Kakamega. All my children's ID read Nairobi. Yeah. Because they were born in this city. Can you imagine? Yes. So tell me, hmm. when you moved now into the city, you went into no, school. No, it's my father who brought us. Yes, yes. He took you, us to school. Your father took you to school. Uh, yes. How was, how was your beginning life? What was, how was your beginning uh, life it here was, in it, the city? It was, you remember, that was before independence. Yeah. So it was tough for everybody who was not European, Asian, that mm. type. Mm. Because Asians had a bit of privilege. Mm -hmm. But as Africans were just coming through the emergency period, so yeah. it, was, it was tough. And we were, in this city, we were bunched in about three, four neighborhoods, what is called Eastlands. So you'll find the, there was Bahati, Sharumoya, Kaloleni. Um, then even Maringo didn't exist then. Really? No. So, we so had where that, were you out of those? So we had the, the Ofafa yeah. uh, that's along the road. Ofafa Jericho? No, no, no. Ofafa Jericho, those are, those are newcomers. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, they, those are dot coms? Yes. Yeah. There was, there, as you try, drive along Jogo Road, there was Mbotela. Yeah. Then there's that Ofafa along the road. Sometimes it was called Ofafa Kunguni. Uh -huh. You know, that, 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 and then Hamza Road yeah. was called Shauriako. That was the farthest part. Because after that, Shauriako and they Shaurimoyo. They Shaurimoyo. Yeah. They Shaurimoyo. Yeah. And then there was Pangadi, they Shariako. Yeah. So those are the areas of Africa al Kuanaka. Awange kuzo uku city. No, no, just like a city, South C, South B, kwa yawa Hindi. Uh -huh. High rich parklands kwa yawa Hindi. Yeah. Hata Pangadi kulikuwa na Africa wakatolewa. Yeah. Wakapeleko ndi wakajengewa Shaurimoyo. The Sharu was built yeah, to remove Africans. Africans because it was a slum like Majengo. Yeah. To remove Africans to settle Asians. Mm. And they settled in Pangani up to Isili. That's why yeah. you see the houses, original houses in Isili were Asian type. Yeah. Yes. So, oh my God. Were you feeling the, Were you feeling it or you were you, just a you kid? You could feel who? it if you... Tr you didn't know it because children, you are excited, but you could feel it when you were to travel because we are talking about the days, Kathy. Yeah. You could not take the train from the main railway station. Africans have taken the train from Makadara. What? That was the railway station for Africans. So you'd go in and get into your third class coaches, yeah. and you are dragged, if you're going to Kisumu, to join, to be put at the back of the first class, second class, and the, then you are dragged to Kisumu or to Mombasa. <laughs> so the train to Mombasa would leave the station yeah. with whites and Asians, in and front. then stops in Makadara for the Africans to join. Those are the days. And the Africans would be there behind. They, they, they would be behind, behind. Next to them, of course, the seats were also made of wood. They were, they were wooden planks. They're for the Africans? Oh, yeah. For the others, it was a proper they, seat. There were cushions. With cushions. Yeah, with cushions. These cushions came after, after independence. Yeah. Yeah. Before independence, it was, it was, you see this, hmm. uh, like, what do you call it? Pack, pack seats. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Those, those are the kind of seats that were there. Hmm. Class. So you could feel it. Then you go to the railway station, you find European toilets, Asian type, and Africans. So the, the, the color bar was there. What? But you, you people, ah, you mean mekuja kama <laughs> Nairobi ni tamu, Kenya ni tamu. Me, you know, I'm shocked because I'm like, are you talking about the city that we are in? Uh, no, that's... This, really? Yeah, there, there was some color bar. You what? could not just, uh, if you are found in some place, you are either a shamba boy, you are a cook, you are a driver. But so you, you, so but you, you don't knew live where, there. You knew where not to walk. You, you, you knew you went here to work, but you live in this place. Right. Yeah. Did they make you feel that? The, the, the whites and, and the Asians, did they also make you feel uh, like you were second class? No, not second, third. I'm talking about third class. Oh, third. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> second, Niju. <laughs> second, third, in Wahidi, you are second. Wow. So that's yeah. why you have whites in Mutaiga than mm. Indians as a cushion <laughs> in oh, Harwich <laughs> Parklands. Bishop, what did that do to you as a, as a child? Not, at, it, me, as a child, we didn't really see it, but... Of course, our fathers felt it. Yeah. The people were older than us. And of course, us. you would hear them talk about it. We could it. hear them talk about yeah. it. And then, uh, the Pakrasa of what you call the GSU mm. were the Majonese. Mm -hmm. These were white young men who were paramilitary police. Wow. And they were very tough, yeah. very rough. And they would sometimes raid these African neighborhoods looking for guns, looking for illicit brew, right. looking for uh, bangi and all stuff. Yeah. And, and I remember they, they, they came to our, our house, poured everything upside down, unga, mama, mwagwa, kila kitu. And one of them was stepping on my brother's toes and he could not even afford to cry till he left. 
So it was, it was not, it was not, it was chaotic. It was, it was not pleasant. Yeah. No, it wasn't. That was actually very scary. Very scary. Did, did it traumatize you? It, tra it traumatized you to some degree. Yeah. But uh, we thank God that independence came when. A few we, years we, after. Yeah, that in 1963 and, and yeah. things started to change. Yeah. And uh, of course, Is it, now, were, were you okay? Were you? Did you um, know about the Mau Mau? Did you see them? Did, you know, because uh, no, no, was... we were too young. Some of us to say we saw them. Okay. So even if you saw, you did not know this is Mau Mau. Yeah, but they you heard. Not, they do not. I work on a uniform. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> but you, your you would... could have interacted with somebody. Yeah. You, my father interacted with them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, quite a lot. Yeah. He had so many friends in the uh, freedom struggle because when he came out uh, to work, he lived. In Waidaka, yeah. Tagorete area. Yeah. And that was a very active area. Because mm -hmm. you know, the late Mzee Kenyatta's home yeah. is on Gong Road. Yeah. Yeah. So while, while, it, while it's going on, while all this is going on, mm. and uh, of course you're growing and you're schooling, mm. uh, w was the education like it is? Was it good? Education, that one you cannot fault the white man. Because mm -hmm. the education system, though it was Kalabad, <laughs> <laughs> because the only secondary school for Africans was yeah. Mwani. What? In Nairobi. Only? Yeah. The only one? Nairobi school then yeah. was called Prince of Wales. Mm -hmm. Ledana was called Duke of York. Yeah. These Pangani girls was Duchess. Ujamhur was Duke of... Duke. Yeah. <laughs> was a Duke. Was a Duke of something. Yeah. So, so this was for Asian boys, Jamhuri. So you Pangani was for Asian girls. Wow. Yeah. Even Bangani, you, you, you couldn't come, you couldn't, nobody could no, fit no. in. <laughs> oh my God. Just Pumwani. So Jamhuri was yeah. named after some duke and Jamhuri, Bangani after the, the duchess, yeah. the wife. So, so that was for Asian girl. So, and then for white, the white girls, it was Kenya High. Mm. So Pumwani, so anybody in Nairobi went to a school, either they went to Pumwani or they went out to Thika. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. In the outskirts. Uh -huh. Or they yeah. went to Le Alliance or Mang High School. Yeah. So there were schools. Yeah. But the, uh, one of the advantages we saw in primary school uh -huh. is that we were, everything was provided for. Oh. We just went to school with our bags. What do you mean everything? You are given exercise books, pencil, rubber. Uh, you know, we're that young. Yeah. rubber kwa dona kula ya kwanza. Alafu da kwa <laughs> I'm talking about 1959. 19, you wonder what is this? <laughs> so, but there was enough rubber. You, 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 you just showed how your and full exercise book gine. shall give you another one. Really? Your textbook. So by the time some of us were going to form one, yeah. you are, uniform you made at school. What? Beddings you made them at they school. They gave you everything? Yes. And food? Food was there. What? And the school fees were so low. So they provided everything you needed. Are you in the Kenyatta government? Yeah. Yes. So the because oh by the time me I'm going to high school. Yeah. It, it's about four years after independence. So now which school are you in at that time? What that high time school did Agakan. you go to? I went to Agakan High School. Hey, bish. Yes. Uluko chesi namtu ewe. No, this is what I said. When you kisomo, tuluko adambiwa da skuizo, eh? Kalamu na karatasi ni sila skuizi. So we were, we had to read. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You have to read. So, so was your father very strict on especially education? He was so busy working because you were not few. Yeah. <laughs> How so, many were you, by the way? We, we were 12. I'm number three of our family of 12. Wait, 12? Is it 12? Yeah. Disciples uh, of Jesus 12. <laughs> I'm number three. <laughs> and you're number three? Yes. So you had many behind you? And you had two ahead of me. Whoa. So my father had to work, my mother yeah. had to work, yeah. but they wanted us to go to school. Strictly mm. they work. Mm. If you are not strict in Nairobi, your children didn't go to school. Because uh, all the pressures were there. Because yeah. you know, you bangi, you wako. No, are you, say, wako, are you telling me squeeze or they were bangi? Aye, bangi, bangi. There was. He's as old as human. <laughs> what? <laughs> as humanity. <laughs> really? Ah. It was still there. Yeah, ndo But was it as... as ndo as... mili kweko. Ndo me. Eh. Mm, ndo mili kweko. <laughs> na bebe. Na bebe. Ayo. Kuchana, tu wakua na chana. <laughs> Oli chana. <laughs> ah, si kuchana. A, a bishop Mi, au kuchana? Mimi nilikana watu wa kuchana. Eh. <laughs> no, number one, nilishindwa kula mairungu wa manakwaja nikali. Mimi eh. hapa unaniona, sipendi kitu kikali. Eh. Hata pili pili sikuli. Eh? Sorry, I'm going to bitter lemon. I'm going to bitter lemon. 
kama nitakunywa soda mimi nitakunywa soda tamu so, so ati chukua chakula changu kizuri tena niweke pilipili eh, ah siwezi mimi nitakula chakula yes. I, i don't so my room ni kali so you you that's the reason why you didn't I take it i saw my father was drinking my older brother was drinking i didn't mm. like mm. alcohol because i saw what it was doing to them mm. so then alcohol so the kabla zia kokoka nilikuwa si si kwa mtu wa pombe right hapana kwa niliona watu mtaani chupa moja mbili mtu anaanza kufanya upuzi kuzunguza mm. upuzi mm. mtu avuta bangi kidogo anaona inchi inapita anaanza kucheka na hii <laughs> na angalia so i don't want to leave this kuna anaanza kuzua na cockroach wewe unaenda wapi ah wewe hii sasa huyu si yeye kama sisi watu wa ndoa mtu liwajua mimi hata hivi nikikaa hivi tu mtu aje amevuta nitakwambia huyu ameungua ame really nitakwambia tu you could tell hata sasa hii nitakwambia hata 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 akitokea kwa tv ni muone akizunguka nitakwambia tu ah huyu ameungua huyu yuko pe huyu yuko peke yake ayuko ah yuko peke yake tunawajua watu wa ndoa adoe adoe wana siasa akito getu pale na biko gaji tukombe biko gaji tayari babi nimelelewa na watu wa gaji ni watu wa ndom watu wa kuchana tumeishi nao yeah hata watu wa biz tuliwaona yeah na mkawapenda tu sasa mko nao mtaani na kwa basi tuenda biz wewe unaangalia now okay let me ask you bishop honestly like you would go with them be with them kwenda biz mimi si kwenda biz lakini tuliwajua tulijua sasa hebu elezea mtu kwenda business aje. Oh kwenda business wale kwa natoka mtaa na pickpocketing tao. Kui be a pickpocket tu kwa mama. Ndio kwa tu biz. Tumeenda biz. Yeah. Unaona ni is a short of business. Ngeta ni kama ngeta. Si ngeta. Hao akupiga ngeta. Wewe utajikuta tu una kibeti. Hauna pesa mfukoni. Wamekusafisha tu mosmos. Yeah. Mm. Sasa vijana wakija when I was walking in town akuja ambe wewe wewe kabla hujaanza biz wameanza biz pioneer mimi nawajua unawajua so wewe huwezi kujifunzia kwangu na wakataza mapema so mimi mimi mtaa mimi zip mtu ajanipio nimeshikia mfukoni mfukoni mwangalie na mshikia mwambie wewe na kujua kabla hujatoka kwenu moranga nilijua story yako najua najua how this operation wakaza ni mwashikia mkono kwa mfuko you, hey. you cannot pick pocket so me. they would pick pocket ah. and mimi nakuja maelenga sasa mimi namwangalia tu kile kitu mkono ninapeleka jua na miss hey. namwangalia wewe hey. <laughs> mtaa sisi ndio ndio wenyewe but bishop yes. if you are growing up in that kind of environment yes. what is it that was changing you to not want it number one the things i observed yeah. then number two uh. my mother made sure i go to church my mother was a very very church From my father was age. not yes Yeah. That's what Paul tells Timothy mm. that from as a young, a young age you yeah. know the scripture. Yeah. So my mother made sure mm. uh, we, we were going to church. Mm. So Church of God Kaloleni was our church. Hey. I was baptized in 1964 in water. What? 1964. Hey. After going through those baptismal classes. Right. So I started then God joined the youth group. Yeah. By the time So I'm then get, were you getting born were you born again or you were no, just No, no, by the time I'm getting saved mm. I was really the secretary of our youth group. I'm the one who invited Joe Kayo to come and preach to our youth group. Preach to me now. <laughs> What? <laughs> What? <laughs> What? So, Joe Kayo hey. could not come so he sent Dr. Wilson Mamboleo yeah. whom they were who were very uh, close friends. They come from the same area mm. and he told him I'm supposed to go and preach in Church of God Youth yeah. rally this afternoon. I cannot go. Can you go? So Mamboleo came. Hey. Huyo ndaliniweza na injili. Eh. Hey. Mm. 1970 akahubiri hey. from the story of the prodigal son hmm. that is a story that i had especially the statement where he says and when he was still afar off yeah that hmm. is chapter 15 hmm. luke 15 verse 20 yeah. his father saw him yes. and he ran towards him yeah. and mamboleo i've never forgotten he said hmm. young man you take one step towards god yeah. and god will take a million steps towards you That's a it. statement that finished me. Hey. That all I need is to take one step towards God yeah. and God will make a million steps towards me. And when he made said that and made the altar call, my girlfriend was in the meeting. Eh? But I stood up and went for it. She didn't come to liachani up. Ili kushiana. Okay, God. Si ni wale tulioko kaya kabisa. Hapana. So ulikuwa hapo na girlfriend? Ah, sasa bi utaishije miaka hiyo bila manzi. <laughs> Bila, so, bila I told you guys you'll have fun today. Yeah, bila <laughs> dem. So, so, <laughs> do you know na ambia ga watu kama ni kama ni mairungi tulitema. Yeah. Kama ni changatu. Okay, mairungi ni gani? Oi bicho. Ndio ndio ndio. Udu mairungi ujui. Uh-uh. Cut. Eh. 
Cat ni gani? Ah, uju cat. Eh. Ibi tu na uzu na uzuaga isili. Kwa Somali. Eh. Ibi na muna chana. Ni veve. Veve. Na na ijua kama veve. Oh, na ijua kama veve. Sindiyo. Aiyo ni majine ya juzi. Jina yake originali mairungi. Oh, mairungi. So, wanachana kabisa. Na peremende ya Hawaii, ya Patko. Ya, lakini we uchani because ni bitter. Hato kiangale mani yangu na yuwa sikula mairungi. Watu wa mairungi ya wana ameno. Watu wa likula mairungi ya wana ameno. Mtu wa rika angu wa likula mairungi. Ana ameno. Ili angu kaza mani. The amount of sweets they were eating. Ya. Tufotu sasa. Halafu wa nalala nayo. Ya. Akikula. Yes. Oh my goodness, ya hezi bakisha mendo. So Bishop, sasa wewe, manzi ukamuambia tuende, tuende tuokoke. Apana, uiti mtu, kuokoke unaita mtu. Eh, huli muambia muende aje. Kuokoke, apana, sindi wali chako limefanyo. Sione, sima munaenda mbele. Eh, ukafikiri atakuja. Apana, utifikiri we, we are under conviction. Yes. Ato wangali na neme kuja, sio mwenye unalia machozi. Yeah. Kwa nundu na neme mwine. So, ukenda ukilia. And See, you we, lifted your there, hands. There were four of us yeah. that went forward. I remember one of them was a brother called Jotha Mambani. Yeah. Up to now, he's still working with the Lord. Wow. The other two I may not remember. But him yeah. and him, me and him, yeah. he's still working with the Lord. Wow. That's 53 years ago. 53 years ago mm. is when you got saved. Yes. Hey! 1970. Hey. Mm. So let me ask you, Bishop. Mm. When you got saved now, you say, the girlfriend you left. Hey. Uliingia ndani kwa Yesu kaingia. Ile cha kabisa. Mimi ndio mpaka leo nashangaa mtu bado sema ameokoka bado anavuta sigara, bado anataka kunywa pombe, bado anataka kufanya eh, umalaya. It doesn't just it is not compatible with salvation. Oh. When a man is in Christ is a new creation. Yes. The old is past away everything has become new. Behold ev all, everything new. has become new. So you move on. Yeah, all Kama mtu atakaye kuokoa you don't condemn them, mm. you pray for them. Mm. Maybe where she, where she went, maybe she's now born again. She could be yeah. serving God. Right. No, I, I but God. but when you left, you left and left and left. Uh, hey, no, my, my friend. Yeah. Hey. Hey. So that time you were a very young man. Yes, I was only 17. So you invited... Uh, 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 the, the one who invited was uh, uh, Apostle uh, Jokai. Apostle Jokai. But they That's... were very close friends and they were working together with Wilson Mamoleo. I, want us I think to... even by that time they were sharing a house uh -huh. in Kariako. Because I want us to talk a little about that. Mm -hmm. He became the father of, uh, of the Apostle Pentecostals, Doc isn't it? Apostle Dr. Jokai yeah. was born again uh, in a crusade done by T.L. Osborne mm -hmm. in 1957. Mm -hmm. In Mombasa, yeah. where Elim Church is at Makupa Roundabout. That's right. where the crusade was. Yeah. That's when he got saved. Yeah. Then they went through some ministry training. They worked with early missionaries yeah. who sent him to Uganda. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That man God used him. Yeah. What you call Elim, yes. Pepha in Kenya. Yeah. Even the church in Kikomba mm. is the one who did the crusade that opened that church. Mm. Pepper Thika, yeah. and he preached all over. Right. And they sent him to Uganda. Mm -hmm. That's why he met his dear wife Rose. Right. They got married. Yeah. And they have three beautiful boys. Yeah. Who are living in the US right now. They're not here. Yeah. And they're in their sixties. They live in the US. The kids the, the, are in the their children. 60s. Yeah. Oh wow. yes. Wow. Joker is a great grandfather. Hmm. He's now eighty five. He's what in his eighties now. He's eighty six. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And those are the men, people like Mamboleo, then Mamboleo should be 87. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I they saw, are they are contemporaries were people like uh, what do you call him? Benson Idahosa, the late Silas Owiti. Right. Yeah, people like uh, Frederick Mawaza from Taita. Mm. People like Isaac Hagu who used to preach in Western Kenya. Yeah. Those were their contemporaries. Those and days. is it true that while uh, Benson Idahosa was doing whatever he was doing in Nigeria, mm. that our Jokai was Joka. doing it here? Yes. That they were at par. The, yes, and there were there was people like Nicholas Bengu in South yeah. Africa. Mm. They were not. I mean, the, there was just there was Alexander Idin in Congo. Mm -hmm. Those are people like who are, who are our fathers in the faith. Right. Yes. So tell me, Bishop, mm. uh, your relationship with him became tight. W was because it he, tight? Uh, when uh, we got born again, yeah. Wilson Mambaleo tells us there's a meeting that's going on in Kariako Social Hall. Yeah. On this day, yeah. on Monday, there's a prayer meeting. It used to be in Garden Hotel. Yeah. On Wednesday, there's a Bible study. And on Saturday, there's a 
Holy Ghost Revival Rally. Mm. If you want to grow, go there. So we went there. Yeah. So we were taught the Bible on Wednesday. By himself? Jokai. By Joe Kayo. Yeah. Then he, he prayed for us on Saturday. He taught on the Holy Spirit on Saturdays. Mm. And on the Monday, he, he, it was prayer. Mm. So we got used to a life of prayer on Monday. Yeah. Bible study on Wednesday. And the Holy Ghost Revival on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we go back to our churches. Yeah. So how was your first encounter with his teachings? Because uh, I hear he's profound. It was profound. Yeah. It was... Um, it was life changing. Yeah. By that time, my my wife, Mama Joy, mm. had been born again under his ministry. Mm. Two years before, earlier, yeah. 1968, when he had gone to preach in in uh, Kangaroo High School, yeah. where she was then a student. Yeah. So he he had, he had been coming to Kenya. Yeah. Invited, invited by KSC. Was Mama Joy the girlfriend? No. Oh, okay. Mama Joy, we uh, didn't know one another. We, no, mm. we didn't know one another then. <laughs> She was, she was in Nembu, yeah. she got born again. I, I'm in Nairobi, I get born again two yeah. years later. Yeah. That time we have not even met. Hey, All of us okay. are doing our own things. I'm doing my A-levels. Yeah. And she's doing her secretarial course. Where are you now at A-levels? Uh, same same Khan. Oh, same Maga Khan. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm, same Maga Khan. Yeah. And then we meet now at, in Kariako, both of us. Yeah. That time I'm in, I'm in the choir. Then she joins the choir. That's why by the grace of God we met. Uh -huh. But Joe Kayo was our pastor. Yeah. And oh. till 19, yeah, and then we started Deliverance Church. It yeah. was not, and it's important for you to tell you, yeah. it, it was, Deliverance Church was not a splinter. Mm. It's just that as we went back to our churches, yeah. we'd come and tell him, there, yeah. we are here on Monday, yeah. powerful prayer. Right. We are here on Wednesday, powerful Bible study. Yeah. We are here on Saturday, mm. being filled with the Holy Spirit to Nabubujika. Yeah. Because sometimes you just allow us to worship and speak in tongues even for hours. Mm. And then Sunday you go to our churches. Yeah. It's like Umeko Athwire. <laughs> <laughs> you need Monday to come and start recharging again. <laughs> Kupepetua. again. So we say, why don't what? we continue with this? So, so the first service, yeah. we, we were only 56. What? The first deliverance church. So it was out of demand. Out of Yes. Because, because you, Kathy, the others you must, were called. You must know now, the uh, things of the Holy Spirit yeah. were looked down upon. Mm. Mm. You know, these days, by the grace of God, yeah. what you call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, yeah. speaking in tongues, yeah. gifts of... Today, it is sort of fashionable because right. of Christian television. Right. But in those days, there was no Christian television. Yeah. So, for... Things of the Holy Spirit. Mm. We, 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 we had churches, of course. PEFA was there. Yeah. PAG was there. Full Gospel had just started. Yeah. But you did find them attracting the educated. Mm -hmm. Oh. As it, it, looked, it was looked like, oh, that's a church for... Um, the low uh, class? Low class yeah. people. So yeah. you find the churches were in Bahati, Kaloleni. Mm. Uh, you get what I'm trying right. to say? Right, yeah. Right. You know? But nevertheless, by the grace of God, mm -hmm. uh, we find now... Valerud coming up. Yeah. At that, that time. At that time. Yeah. But it was still a very small church. Right. At that time. Oh, even Valerud. And Marvin Thomas. It was a very small congregation. Yeah. Yeah. But when Joe Kayo started, mm -hmm. and he started going to schools, to colleges, medical training center, yeah. Kenya Science Teachers College, yeah. Nairobi University, he was invited. I was in that meeting. Mm -hmm. And when he went there, mm -hmm. he was going to talk, listen to this word language. Yes. We have invited him to talk about the controversial subject of the Holy Spirit. That was how the, the lead of the service introduced him. The theme was the controversial subject. Subject of the Holy Spirit. Because <gasps> it was considered controversial. Yeah. But he taught <sighs> as he could. Mm. Then we went to Kenya, Kenyatta University then yeah. also. Because there was a teacher there called Mr. Sheng, mm -hmm. who used to teach religion. And he Bishop, you remember all these names and, oh my gosh, eh? You live as, at as that 120 as a, preacher, as a preacher, I'm supposed to remember names that's of so people powerful. I never met. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's so, so powerful, Shen, yeah. So Sheng brought his students to Kariako uh -huh. to look at this phenomena of people falling under the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Oh, my. And he wanted to find out, is it real? Yeah. And when Joe Kai made an altar call, they came, about yeah. six of them, uh -huh. st students. To, to find out. To find out. And nobody touched them. Mm. They found themselves on the floor. 
See God. Nobody touched them. God dealt with them. Nobody touched yeah. And we didn't know. They're the ones who are confessing later. We were doing research. Yeah. Whether wow. this falling in the spirit is real yeah. or people are being pushed. So God started You know when I see people today, preachers trying to push people. I tell people, I'm not a wrestler. Yeah. You're not supposed to be a wrestler. <laughs> if people are going to fall under the power, let them fall under the power. You don't have to fake it. Yeah. Today people are faking mm. it. You don't have to fake mm. it. We were raised mm. just preaching that yeah. word of God that's yeah. not mixed with anything. Yeah. It's an adult, ad, ad, adulterated. And you just bring that word. Let yeah. the word work in people's lives. The Holy Ghost can take over. Let offer. the Holy Ghost... He's God all by himself. He, he does need your help. Right. No, he can do what he... The church is not you as Catholic. Yeah, yeah. It's not mine. No. These are not our people. No. They are God's people. God's people. Let God do with them what God what desires. What he wants. Yeah, just teach the word. Let the word of God transform them. Yeah. That's what, that's what you are taught. So while you're at it... Yes. And you're going and you're ministering and all... Are you thinking that you're one day going to become this big bishop? Are you even there? Are you desiring? <laughs> no. Mm. And when I'm doing my A-levels, I want to... I did my A-levels in physics, maths, and chemistry. Yeah. And I wanted to go to, into flying school. And that's, well, that's, that's what I wanted. Yeah. And... Uh, and you had the Oblongata Mendula. Yeah. yeah we, I did. I, 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 I had the capacity of remembering what I was taught during the exam. Wow. <laughs> You know, you know, you can be taught stuff, but you cannot remember doing the exams. Eh, they they say you are failed. You know? Yeah. So by the grace of God, mm. we were being prepared to go. Yeah. And that's when, in fact, I was staying in Impala Hotel here, being prepared to go to Soroti, Uganda. Hey. You know, being, those, those are the Kenyan recruits. To do aviation. To, to, to that study, because East African, East African community had a flying school in Soroti. Yeah. So that's where all people are being trained in aviation were taken, not right. Wilson Airport. Right. That's a southern community. So doctors were trained in Makerere, yeah. engineers in Nairobi University, yeah. lawyers in Dar es Salaam. Yeah. That's how we, they had shared this. Uh -huh. And the, the school of aviation yeah. was in Uganda. Mm -hmm. School of metrology was in Nairobi here. So that's how the things have been shared. Right. That's when God spoke. Mm. And Joker I told me, where are you going? There's a call of God upon your life, young man. And that's, that's how things started. And you, See, you sometimes just, you just God accepted, spoke, yeah. speaks to you through delegated authority. Mm. Mm. You know me, I would like to tell people I, I, I was sleeping. <laughs> God woke me up at 1 a.m. I had a, you know, me, a big voice. A big voice. Yeah. I was hit on the head with a hammer. Yeah. I, I'll disappoint <laughs> you. Some, I know there are people who have been. God has a, you yeah. must be so stubborn for God to deal with you like that. <laughs> that, that that's what I would say. <laughs> but, but, like he has to shake you. He has to shake yeah. If God has really to shake you up, then maybe he's a, he, he sees you are stubborn. Yeah. You must be. But uh, Joe Kai spoke. Uh -huh. It was to me and Morima, the oh, late Evans Morima. Yeah. He was, at that time, he, was, he had just finished his uh, social work course at Kenyatta University. Were you age mates? He, he was about three, four years older than me. Uh -huh. you, you should remember, I went to school when I was very young. Yeah, okay. By the grace of God. Yeah. So you were sharp from the beginning. You yeah. were just a sharp kid. Yeah, I'm still sharp. I see now. how Joey Mudibu. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I'm still sharp. I, I see it, yeah, Bishop. I did my A-levels before, did my A -levels before I was 19. Yeah. I did my O-levels before I was 17. Hmm. By the time I was hitting 17, I'd finished my O-levels. Yeah. By the time I'm hitting 19, I'd finished my A-levels. Yeah. Yes. So you are actually a very young man. Yes, yeah, so I was ahead. Going I was ahead of everybody, yeah. of very, very many people. Yeah. So some of the people you see who are my contemporaries, we find at the end of the day, they are two or three years older than me. You are younger than them. Yeah. Wow. So he says now to both of you, where so, are you going? So uh, Marima was going to work for Bamburi Portland. Yeah. He had been recruited to, to be a, what do you call that, personnel yeah. officer. And that's when we left and joined your car. We were like, like Elijah touching Elijah. Yeah. So we left everything and followed him. And followed him. And we started Did traveling with him. Did you tell your father? He didn't talk to me for about four years. When you told him? That you're not going, no longer doing How aviation. How do you leave a job of where the river and dege? I said, "Kazi ya dereva and dege." I would end up with kubiri, and he looks at me like, because you see, those days preachers yeah. were considered people who were academic dropouts. Mm. People didn't understand things in school. Yeah. Primary school dropouts. Yeah. Right. Now I viraka. So my father said, "Usiruli apa kuangu na viraka." He told. He the kazi ya maskini. Eh. And he was 
At that time, he was smoking and drinking, and he wasn't amused. Because you were seeing the preachers that were there in the churches in Eastlands. Yeah. They, 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 it was nothing to write home about. Right. It's not something you'd admire. Yes. So if you talk to someone, they say, no, I would like to be a, a, a teacher. I would like to be. No, man, but not a preacher. Not a preacher. So yeah, because he came in and he was yeah. not amused. He was, of so for course. Four years, like all this education, you're bringing it down to yeah. this. Yeah, I'm talking about someone who got a division one in four, in all levels. So you're doing. Hey, like in the division one. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that distinction in mathematics. Eh? Yeah. Hey, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bishop, my, my heart is out. Mathematics, si kusikia kitu. Si kusikia. <laughs> najua tu ili ya kwesamu pesa. Ah, <laughs> yeah, tu, tu, tu. Ya kwesamu, najua, I know you, I know where you come from. <laughs> my money, how, as long as you know how to count money. Nani kienda banka wani ulizange tu ulusoma paka wapi. Eh. Yeah. Mathematics. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, that, that, that's wow. what, to him, I was like the brightest. Where are you going? Yeah. But God is gracious. Yeah. My father, after four years when I was preaching, we met. What, what did it affect you, the four years? I struggled because I wanted his affirmation. Mm. Mm. A father's affirmation is very good for a son. Talk to us. For a father, yeah. a son needs your affirmation. Yeah. So when it's not there, you can actually you, go you, look, you looking for it. You look for it. That's why even when Reuben, when the... Jacob did not affirm him, mm. and he mm. died. Reuben struggled until Moses yeah. came to affirm him. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes if you're, a, a, if you're not being affirmed by your earthly father, mm. your spiritual father can affirm you mm. to bring wow. healing in your life. So there is hope. So you find people saying, oh, there's nothing. Our spiritual fathers, listen. Mm. It took Moses to declare, let Reuben live. Yes. And his descendants not to be few. Because Moses noticed something. Yeah. Because his earthly father said, though you are my firstborn, you shall not excel. Yeah. Yeah. You'll remain unstable, unstable as, water. as water. And he gives the, the birthright, the firstborn birthright he gives, gives to Joseph. Yeah. And he gives the king, kingship to Judah. Mm. And he grows Reuben. Yeah. So as a son, I needed that affirmation. Mm. And I told God, I cannot preach well until I know my father. Has approved. Has approved. Yeah. And until when I met my father, and he looked at me smoking, so he told me, are you still preaching? And I told him, yes. No, we were speaking of our mother tongue. Eh. But I'm very fluent in Kiluya. Eh, yeah, eh. Eh. You know, eh. you know now, eh. are you still preaching? Eh. You know, you wonder, if I say yes, mm. he may insult me. If I say no, I'll be lying. Because I was doing meetings in yeah. Kisumu that time. Right. And he, he was living in Chemele where I was working. Mm. So I told him, yes, I'm still preaching. Mm. Then he asked me, what is the highest office you can attain in that church of yours? Mm. See, that time we, we are just your, your kind. So yeah. says, pastor. Mm. Said, then he asked me a question. Mm. You don't have bishops in your church? Mm. You remember this time my father doesn't go to church. He's not a church person. It's only my mother who was. Mm. So I said, bishops, yes. Mm. Then he told me, look, I release you to become the highest you can become in your church. Hey. And that, that time he's hey. smoking. I'm, I'm, not that he's speaking in tongues. Hey. He's smoking in between those. Uh, I release you to become. You see, a father's blessing can come in very interesting Jesus. ways. And with that statement, hey. I received my affirmation. Hey. In the midst of smoking. Because as soon as he finished his meal, he lit a cigarette. And he said, I and want he you asked to me those the questions. Highest. Whatever it is in your church become. So that's where the blessing of become a bishop came oh from. My from my father. Yeah. Ten years before he died, mm. he knelt in my house. Me and my wife led him to the Lord. He saw it. So he saw you as the bishop. And as soon as he got born again, he stopped smoking, stopped drinking. He traveled from here. We led him to, my, to the Lord in our house in Buruburu. Yeah. He travels to Western, looks for the local pastor and tells him, I want to be baptized. He did not allow me to baptize him. He, went to his, he wanted the people in the village to know he's born again. Oh. He went to the river alone. He was the only one who was baptized that day. And he said, give me the name of Jesus' best disciple. But the next time I meet him, he tells me, I am Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Hey! Hey, whoa! He became, and for 10 years, you could not call him any other name. Peter? Peter. What? And... I don't understand. I struggle quite a cigar. We only put a cigar since I was born. He was smoking. Yeah. But the day he got born again, he, he never smoked again, never drank again. 
Please just what? Yes. Kabisa. And it's in my house. Me and my wife are the one. Let me with my brother and his wife. As for how did that make you feel? We felt fulfilled. You know, Kathy, it's one thing to preach. Mm. But when you know, if you know about hell, if you've read about hell, mm. what Jesus says about mm. hell, mm. then you read about the experience of people who are going to hell mm. in the book of Revelation. Mm. You don't want your relative to go there. Yeah. You don't yeah. want someone you know to go. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want to appear like the rich mm. man who's cried to Abraham. Please, yeah. send Lazarus mm. to mm. tell my brothers mm. not to come yeah. here. Yeah. There are people in hell right mm. now who are crying. Can my brothers please listen to Akina Listen, yeah. listen to what Akina Kathy has said. Yeah. Listen, because Abraham said, no, no, no. Mm. Nobody can go to there. They must, if they don't listen to Moses yeah. and the preachers who are there, they are doomed. They won't listen. And people yeah. think, oh, an angel is coming. An angel mm. is not coming to yeah. preach. Yeah, yeah, you no, are the, no, You are the angel of, of your... Nobody is rising from the dead right. to come and preach. You're the if angel you of the house. If you don't listen to those of us who are here now, they, you have no hope. Yeah. So, so to know that my father, by the time he died, he knew the Lord. My mother knew the Lord. My father-in-law knew the Lord. My mother, to me that... And then, because of our salvation, we can look around our brothers and sisters. Many of them are born again. Yeah. And many of them are serving God in their own right. We give God the glory. Mm -hmm. It's fulfilling. So, Bishop, my goodness, that is, this is so powerful. I, I want to spend the entire day <laughs> <laughs> okay. with you. No, you can like, spend the like, entire day. <laughs> stay here. Me, I've got a place to go. I must to go. <laughs> See, I told you. Before. <laughs> <laughs> with you, guys, stay the whole day here. But we, after a certain time, me, I must go. <laughs> yes, Bishop. <laughs> you know, yes. there is so much yes, that I lot. have. And yes. I know that uh, people, you're really, really blessing a lot of people. We, now, we, for, we a young, the Lord. for a young man, a mm. bishop, that's watching you right now, where is your, your take on fatherhood, on, on, on spiritual authority, on honor? See, that time when Joe Kai is talking to us, mm. that's who he was. And we honored him, and me and Murima followed him. Yeah. And by the grace of God, We've gone the way we did. Right. And as time goes by, as we grow in our ministries, mm. you reach a place where you realize, you know what? I am speaking into the lives of very many people, mm. but nobody's speaking into my life. Mm. And that can be dangerous. Mm. Because I am pastoring very many people. Yeah. And there are many people accountable to me. Am I accountable to somebody? Hmm. And I normally say it is important for us to learn that even Jesus says, I don't do anything unless that which I see my father doing. Right. And I'll not. So in other words, it says, my joy is to do the will of him that sent me hmm. and finish it. So his, his attention was, what does the father want. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to please the Father. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the Heavenly Father to Jesus Christ. Right. You understand me now? Yeah. Now, so fatherhood comes from God. Yeah. Ephesians 3.14. Right. I bow my knee to the Heavenly Father mm. from whom mm. all the families of heaven and earth are named. Mm. So fatherhood is not a human thing. Mm. It's from God. Mm -hmm. Because God is the ultimate Father. Yeah. That's why in the Trinity there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And again and again you notice the Father affirmed the Son at his baptism, in the midst of the ministry, mm -hmm. even at the cross. Yeah. He still affirmed it. Yeah. Him. Yeah. And that strengthened the Son again and again. Therefore, you need someone also who can affirm you mm -hmm. and strengthen you and speak to your life and you are accountable to them. Yeah. Who can call you and sit down with you. Exactly. And tell you, this is what I see. This is what I hear. They can reconfirm what the God is doing, what, sorry, what God is doing in your life. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I just hear from God. It's very interesting that though Samuel was hearing God call him, God made it in such a way he must look for Eli. Hey. 
He so, left in such a way that he had to look for Eli. Yeah. And Eli had to speak and tell him, next time you hear that voice, this is how you respond. Right. And that helped his life. Mm. That Moses, as powerful as he is, mm. God had to bring in Jethro mm. to father him. Otherwise, Moses would have died young. <laughs> he was going to die early. But he had to bring him his own father-in-law, yeah. who was a priest of Midian, to bring fatherhood in his life yeah. and bring order. Mm. You ask, why couldn't God tell those things to Moses? Yeah. No, see, God uses human agents because the earth he has given to the sons of men. And there are some things, Kathy, you can be a prayer warrior, you yeah. can be, but there are some things God will keep quiet until you are a St. Paul. <laughs> yes, you see lightning. Yes, you hear a voice. You are falling off, off from your horse. You are on the ground and you are blind. And God says, the rest of this message uh, is uh, with a man. Yes. I'm not telling you. Yeah. You go to Damascus, there you shall be told what, to do. what you are going to do. Hmm. It was... Why didn't God just finish it? And tell him. And tell him. Yeah. Yes, tell Ananias. Yeah. Go to the street that called straight. Yeah. There's a man called Saul. He has seen you in a vision. You are coming to pray for him. Mm. He's blind. Mm. This is what, and Ananias said, God, I know that guy. <laughs> that you're he's saying he, the, he's the coming killer. looking for me. I know he's, <laughs> he's coming to look for me. Yeah. Says, don't mind, I've dealt with that part yeah. of him. Ninyuki, lakini mesha niuma. Hey. The arrow is in my hands. <laughs> I've taken the sting out Rabose. of him. But hey. now he wants to know mm. what I shall do with the rest of, mm. rest of his life. Yeah. So it, it, why didn't God just finish the message? He had to take Ananias to go and tell Saul, so this is what God has told me. Mm. So when Saul testifies even before Agrippa, yeah. says, I've not been um, disobedient to the heavenly vision. Yeah. It was not given to him by direct audible voice. Yeah. It is what Ananias told him. Because God is a God of order. And God uses human agents. Mm. Delegated authority. Mm. And you cannot ignore it wherever you are, at whatever level. Mm. Sometimes God would raise someone who will tell you something that will sort out your life and take you forward. From then, God, Paul needed Barnabas yeah. to sort him out. Right. Even give him a platform for ministry. He didn't have it. It's Barnabas who gave him a platform. Mm. And some, that's what, God has a sense of humor. He does. That's what he will do. So when it comes to the issue of fatherhood, I know people take it lightly. People think, ah, can, you have, you have, your earthly father is enough. No, there are several fathers. Because like now, Bishop, I'm sorry to, to even yeah, go ahead. short. You have a very big ministry. You have, I mean, it's huge. Everybody knows you. So why, 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 why still... Owner and, and but that's that's what you need. Yeah. That that's what that's when you need it more. <laughs> that's when you need it more. Mm. The, the, see, the higher you go, the greater the devils you have to deal with. The mm. greater the level of devils you have to deal with. Right. And that's when you need people can pray with you, who know the kind of devils you are dealing with. Because mm. if you just oh you know, <laughs> I like the way Bishop Jakes puts it. Yeah. If you, are, if you are the cleverest person in the group you are in, you have outgrown the group. The room is too small. The room is too small for yeah. you. You are, like a, you are like a big fish in a small pond. Yeah. You are wasting your time yeah. there. You need yeah. to connect with people, stretch your faith, stretch your thinking, mm. stretch your ideas, mm. and even challenge you. Yeah. Tell you, mm, we didn't like the way you are talking to your wife. Mm. We, when your wife call, you did not pick up call. Uh -huh. when, I, we know we are, we are sitting with you here. Right. But that was Mama Joy you called. Yeah. But how did, why did you ignore? You get me now? Yes. You need people like that who can challenge you. Can you walk out and go and answer the call? Because hmm. they know that relationship is important. Right. Know those who encourage you to ignore your wife. Yeah, leave this ignore one. Ignore your children. Mm. You get hmm. me now? Yeah. Yesterday, um, our, our son was, he, he's traveling to the U.S. because they're expecting their, their second baby next, this month of March. Yeah. Uh, and there's some place we are going with Bishop Mark. But I told him, no, no, my son is traveling. I need to see him off to the airport. Mm. Wow. And, and, to, and that was the end of the story. Yeah. He did not say, no, no, this is it. He said, oh, because 
to where some of us have reached right now, yeah. you know family is important. Yeah, right. So we stayed. I'm the one who took my son to the airport, <laughs> walked him in. You know, we, some of us raised our faces yeah. at the security company. Ah, Bishop, no, Karibu, Karibu. So I was, able to, I was able to open a few doors for him. Yeah. As he, that's what we do. Mm. And that's what a father can do. Right. For. Father right. can open doors that you cannot open for yourself. Hey. You know? Yeah. And that is why you, you need, need a father to speak into your life. Mm -hmm. But especially for accountability. Mm -hmm. And there are several levels, Kathy, before I get out of that. Yeah. At my local church, mm -hmm. I have people that I sit with. I don't, I don't operate alone mm -hmm. at that level. Yeah. And I'm accountable. If, if you go to Deliverance Church or Moja, yeah. you'll never find me counting the offering, banking the offering. Mm -hmm. I don't go to the counting room. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not for me. I'm just given a report. Yeah. And the only money I receive from the church mm -hmm. is the money that's meant for me. Yeah. And I normally tell my treasurer, I'll not account for any money before the elders, you do. Yeah. So don't give me any money you cannot account for. And what you give me is what is legally mine, that I've paid taxes on. Yeah. That one I'll take. Yeah. That one, I mean, me and my wife will eat. Yeah. But the others, keep it there until we discuss. See, that's accountability. Mm. There's a line between me and my church money. Yeah. And then it comes at a national level. Mm -hmm. I've got... Bishop Mark, Jimmy Kemani, mm. George Kichana, uh, Benjamin Kipruto, Paul Oselo, and Kanyaru. Mm -hmm. Six men mm -hmm. with whom I sit within an accountability group. Then outside Deliverance Church, I have other men. Yeah. Boniface Adoyo, Moffat, Kiliopa, Ambrose, Ambrose Nyangao. You're talking about uh, Tommy Mende. Mm. You're talking about uh, people like Paul Ligono. Mm -hmm. These are men also I sit with that are outside, outside now deliverance church deliverance. who can now tell me outside this is what we are hearing about you. You know, in deliverance church, we, we can say, you know, we have one, we are doing, <laughs> but someone else wow. outside can tell you, we hear this about deliverance church, what is going on? Wow. So you need sometimes people who can talk to you from objectively, mm. not subjectively. Yeah. Because there are things me and Bishop Mark, we are in agreement with Gigi. So we, we are happy. Right. But I want someone else to tell me, we hear this, have you checked this and this? Then internationally. Yeah. That's where my spiritual father comes in. Internationally. Dave Richards. Then uh, together with him, we've got Steve Thomas, Guizam Kandla. Mm. We've got people like Nicholas Wafula in Uganda. Mm. This is internationally. Mm. These are people that I'm accountable to when we sit together. Yeah. I think you know one of them, Buck Hudson, David Hudson. Yes. Comes to print. Mm -hmm. he, he's in... He's in the group. He's in that group. Yeah, that can tell Even you, in, Bishop... In May, I'm going there. Yeah. We have a meeting for one week in May, right. in London. Yeah. We shall all meet together. For the first day, it's just accountability. What's going on in Kenya? What's going on? Accountability structures. What's going on in your life? What's happen, happening to your family? So what you're saying, Bishop, is that accountability structures must be set. Must be there. If you, you must set if you are going, You need... This building is standing because there are structures that are holding it. Otherwise, the room, room will collapse. It will collapse, yeah. Yes, yeah. the roof will come on you. Absolutely. But if you have no pillars, mm -hmm. you don't have accountability groups at every level. Yeah. Then whatever you are building has no foundation. Right. So that's where our father comes in. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it is very important what you're telling a young man right now to make sure they're accountable. Even they are not just, fa because I've seen, Bishop, mm. a lot of, especially the young people now, yeah. have a father, but quote unquote, as just a cliche. When, yeah. when the rubber meets the road, mm -mm. they, yeah. they yeah. can't even tell the father anything. No, and they you cannot no tell rapport. them anything. They don't talk. That's why Bishop Mark will tell you, if you want me to be your father, mm. I want the, your phone, your wife's phone, and tell your wife she can call me at any time. You don't have to interfere. Come on. Come on. Yeah, mm. because if you t tell people I'm your father yeah. and your children cannot talk to me and you're telling your wife, Dai Hua, eh. that you rang so and so, you will see me. You know, if then that's not fatherhood. That's where I was going. You, you are a Because there is a lot of that. You, you, are, you are cheating your wife. You are a con man. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> leaders in Umoja, they know my pastor. Hmm. My own fellow pastors that I pastor, they know my pastor. When he comes, I allow them to meet him without me. 
What? You see, there is something called spiritual audit. <laughs> you may never have done that mm. in your ministry. Mm. You need someone who can come and just meet your leaders without you. Mm. A whole day, just sit, take tea, eat lunch, eat dinner. Listen to all of them. And they can sit with you and tell you, I've sat with your leaders, so and so is hurting. Wow. So and so is struggling. Yeah. So and so needs close attention from you. Mm. So and so is mature enough to be planted now. Yeah. The more you hold them here, the more you are messing up. That only someone is only as Jethro can come and tell you that. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> there are things you are doing yeah. you should have delegated to so and so. When he comes, I allow him to sit with my own children. Yeah. Joy and the others. Yeah. And I'm not there. They are allowed to talk to him about us. If Mama Joy wants to talk to him, he's allowed. she's allowed. They know his number. So if they see anything in the church, yeah. they can talk to him. Yeah. They say things in my life, they can talk to him. Because unless you are ready to do that, that's not a father. Hey, it's a cliche, you're just talking. You're just joking. Yeah. And it, you don't, and because there's a lot of that. I give you call. We are, it's a wrap. I'm mm. not talking to you again. Mm. There is that. Where I, the I, husband wants I, the wife. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know those who have... See, the wives have told me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was told. <laughs> so we, we've gone through that. Mm. But if you really want to benefit from a father, yeah. get a father out of conviction. You know, out of conviction, yeah. make sure your family members know yeah. who it is. Mm. Relate with him. In an open way. Right. So my pastor can call me. And it's very interesting. He's an Englishman. So when I call him sometimes, or he calls and I answer, mm. he tells me, JB, mm. you sound tired. He'll pick it from my voice. And we'll start from there. Wow. We can talk for a whole hour. What? This time we have not talked because he's, one of his family members is very sick. Mm. So I'm, we are praying for him. Right. Yeah, but... But he can tell you, he you sound tired. Me. Yes. And will you take it seriously and do something about it? That's why I learned to take holidays. Eh? Yeah. I can travel with him. He tells you, now, when you go back home, you need to make up to, for his mama joy. Mm. You know, take a week. Tell people, no, just... That's why I learned mm. to take a holiday. Yeah. To take some time off. Just to minister to my family. And I don't apologize. Wow. Because at the end of the wow. day, yeah. on, the death, on your deathbed, yes. the person you, do, you want to wish you really invested in mm. is your family. Is your members. family, yeah. yeah. It's you, true. Can you say, mm, it's you, true. You, 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 you die today. Sunday, how about you? You die today. 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 But it's if true. you are a man, your wife will be a widow. Yeah. Your children will be orphans. Yeah. If you are a woman, your husband will be a, a widow. Right. So it is important as we take care of the church of Jesus Christ, we remember, his only father will tell you, you are not paying attention to your children. Jesus. You are not paying attention to your wife. Yeah. These people in your team are hearty. Correct this one. They may even tell you, who you? Yeah. I know you. Yeah. I know you. Yeah. I'm to come with a refu. Yeah. <laughs> and I end up. And I end up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because wow. he's an outsider. Yeah. So sometimes, and pastors are not realized, you need to do a spiritual audit. Mm -hmm. So spiritual audit is critical. It's cri yeah, and it's got, an, it's got to be someone who's, whom you are ready to listen to. Like a Jethro can sit with you. Yeah. I've audited what you are doing, Moses. Yeah. And if you go to like this, you, 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 are, you are, die. people are tired. You and will people die. Are, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. And when you went to God, God told him, Jethro is right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you need <laughs> get me this number of people. Yeah, lay hands on them. Your spirit will, Their be spirit will go on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, Bishop. Mm. Uh, so what you're telling us in simple terms is a young man ought to understand the the, the power of a father. Submit and the people who are called now, we need to temper that yeah. very quickly before you get to this point. Yes. If, if someone comes, you don't go, go around looking for sons. I'm shopping for sons. Yeah. No, you don't shop for no. sons. Because that's a mistake. There are yeah. people who say, you know, I'm a father. Yeah. If you're going to shout it out, you're yeah. not a true father. <laughs> yeah. You are a charlatan. Yes. You are a fake. Mm. Because father-son relationship is not primarily financial. It's mm. not monetary. Mm. Mm. Talk I'll to say us. that again. Talk to us, Bishop. It's not monetary. Yeah. 
No. It's, a, it's an immense responsibility. Mm. So don't look at anybody who comes to your son and you see money. Yeah. You, then you're seeing the wrong thing. Right. Your motive is wrong. Right. And once you have wrong motives, it can't work. God is not, um, is not happy. It can't work. So you don't shop for sun. Mm. It is a son who says, I see the grace upon you. And I feel I can benefit from that grace. Mm. And I'm ready to submit under that grace. Mm. Mm. The prodigal son left her father. Mm -hmm. He took what the father had. Then he went away from his own father. Then he, the grace that he had, because he was not under it, yeah. every material thing he had that he had gotten from, from that grace disappeared. Mm. School, and suddenly he was hungry. Yeah. He was naked. He was lonely. And the Bible says he went and joined himself, listen to my words, yeah. to another father. Hmm. Because that was not his father, he sent him to feed swine. Yeah. Now, between me and you, mm -hmm. you can guess, that man must have had his own physical sons. Right. Whom he never sent to feed swine. Uh -huh. But he was sending another man's Son, son to feed swine. When you submit yourself to a father who is not your true father, you will feed swine. Listen, they are either going to misuse you mm. or abuse you. They'll send you to feed swine. It is when he was there, he said, Ah, uh ah, -uh, in my father's. Mm. He house, came to himself. He came to himself. Yeah. He got that revelation. He got that conviction. Mm. This is not my father. father. In my father's house. Because in my father's house, yeah. even servants are not treated like this. Yeah. He says, I will arise and go back to my father. father. Fathers, it is sons who look for fathers out of conviction. Hey. And as he was going, a true father saw him. Yeah. He ran. He ran towards him. Kissed him. He did not ask for an envelope. He closed him. He gave him a covering. He gave him a ring of identity. Yeah. He gave him shoes for mobility. Mm. He gave him food to strengthen him. Mm. That's a true father. That's a true father. But someone who's asking you, Umen mm. that's not a father. It's a charlatan. And I'm not apologizing. Right. <laughs> a true father. Will cover you. Will give you identity. Will give you mobility. Will give you will feed you. Hmm. Hey, Bishop. And he'll even talk on your behalf. When the older brother came, yes. is the father went to speak to him. He did not send him to talk to your brother. So your father will speak on your behalf? He will defend you. Wow. That's a true father. Wow. Bishop, that is powerful. That is powerful. And especially that you are doing it at 70. You said you are now 70 years old. Yeah, this year. 70. By the grace Bishop. of God. You look very nice. No, we thank God. You look very but nice. But there's a scripture to that. To Psalm 103. He'll yeah. renew your youth like the eagles. Yeah. If you have a body, hujaweka mairungi. Hujaweka bangi. Hujaweka changa. Hujaweka buza. Hujaweka whiskey, Jameson. Yeah. Hey! Itaka. Men who see ni ni lo me ambi a doctori ngo ayi na niuma. Eh. Ado zote ziko. Yeah. Hey, no, God is good. God has been good Nine to you. Ma. God has been good to you. No, na ambi a kuokoka you na kuwa vitu vingi. Yeah. You save your own body. Yeah. You save your money. Yeah. You save your future. Right. You save your looks. Yeah. <laughs> there are people in yeah. the neighborhood where I grew up. Yeah. Ni tu kena we sa i. Yeah. Ni kuambi who you. Tu kiri kuana i primary al kuani shinda mtiani. Yeah. Yeah. Because he looks so old. Like your father. Yes. He looks, <laughs> he looks so old. Who is Jama? Yeah. Me, you number 13. You Jama, you are number 5. Eh. You are prime. Yeah. Like you are talking to him. Yeah. I am talking to him. Yeah. Easy vitu. I am talking to him. Yeah. So we are now. Yeah. 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 I'm glad I came out that of this God environment. That God kept you. Yeah. Yeah. That God kept you. So fatherhood is important. It is very important. Yeah. Bishop, we are so proud of you. Wow, that's all the time we had for today. We'll see you here next week, same time, same channel. You see how it went? We are taking it on a higher notch. This is Woman Without Limits. One of the things they told and they told me in a cross-cultural marriage, Ali Abua, that those men from Western, 
or Luos. If you marry people, you guys, oh, that's what I can hear. And they told me, for a kikuyu man, he did a kaya as could be. That's my atakukali. Atakukali. They told us before we got to marry. Oh. So I normally tell the young couples that oh. I'm doing weddings. I tell them actually the first one they were wrong. Yeah. And she will go. She will never go. Yeah. But the second one they were right. Whoa.